Stan Gibalisco here, proprietor and operator of amateur radio station W1GV. Da da da, da 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 da, da da da, da da da. Here to talk about occasions when that venerable condition called resonance can actually be a bad thing to have. Consider the simplest possible case, uh, and that is a dipole antenna. Let's just suppose that it's an ordinary half-wavelength dipole. So on 40 meters, it would be about 66 feet long. So let's just say it's for 7 megahertz, taking velocity factor into account the physical length required for an electrical half wavelength would be 66 feet approximately. Well, let's just say it's exact, or choose a frequency at which 66 feet represents precisely a half a wavelength. Now, we have a feed line. We can have open wire line. We can have coaxial line with a preferably with a ballon coil here. Uh, if it's an open wire line, we would have a tuner, and that's what I've shown here. Open wire meaning ladder line, ribbon line, or the increasingly popular so-called window line, which is a ribbon line with pieces cut out of the dielectric material to reduce the loss. And your radio your transceiver. Mine would be a an ICOM IC746 Pro at home or if I ever get on the road again uh, a Yaesu FT857D but it's a transceiver and it has a transmitter in it. Now when you choose a length for your feed line you need to have a certain amount of uh, you need to take a certain amount of care. You do not want in any case the length of your feed line to be any multiple n any whole number multiple n of one quarter of a wavelength under no circumstances if this happens to be a quarter of a wavelength for example and this is 73 ohms roughly uh, in the ideal case at the feed point, 73 ohms purely resistive, and you have a quarter wavelength line, you're going to get a very high, purely resistive but very high impedance here at the tuner, and it may be too high for the tuner to handle. Uh, if you take a little bit of feed line away or add a little bit, you're going to add reactants, but the tuner is designed to tune the reactants out, and it may bring the impedance within range of the tuner. If this were to be a half a wavelength or any integral multiple thereof, you would get 73 ohms again. You'd get a repetition of this. But you'd also have a resonant feed line. In any case, particularly when the length is, a, is an integral multiple of a half a wavelength, but Actually, if it's an integral multiple of a quarter of a wavelength, you can get a similar phenomenon. When that happens, something called antenna currents, which are already inevitable. Now, this is not a, a purely technical term. But every feed line has these. The way to minimize it in the case of an open wire line with a dipole antenna is to run the open wire line at a right angle from a straight dipole for at least a quarter of a wavelength and preferably a half a wavelength or more, uh, thereby balancing the amount of current from this side of the dipole that influences the feed line versus the amount of current from that side. But even then, if you have a resonant feed line, 
it's going to exaggerate the tendency of this line to develop an antenna currents. And what are they? Well, they're currents that flow in the feed line in the wrong fashion. Rather than flowing with equal intensity but opposite directions, they flow with equal intensity but in the same direction. This feed line acts as a receiving antenna of sorts and then retransmits or re-radiates the RF that it has picked up, thereby messing up the performance of your dipole antenna from what it ideally should be. But it also causes another phenomenon, or an increased chance of getting it. And it's never a good thing to have. And with a dipole like this, uh, you should hope you'd never have it. It is called RF in the shack. <laughs> if you've ever had RF in the shack bad, you know what it's like. You touch any metal part of your radio and you're going to get an RF burn. Remember those old microphones? I don't know if you're old enough to remember these that were tabletop microphones. Pretty elaborate affairs. Um, I remember, I think, A-Static, a company called A-Static, may still make them. But anyway, if you have RF in the shack really bad and you start talking into that microphone and one of your lips happens to come into contact with that microphone, you're going to know that something's amiss instantly. CQ, 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 this is W1GV, CQ, uh, uh, uh. It's going to stop you cold because it's going to be such a painful and unwelcome surprise. You can get it off your keyer paddles uh, and it also up can upset the performance of your radio causing the internal keyer or an external keyer if you have one to misbehave in ways that you would never imagine. It'll send extra dits and dahs and Oh, all sorts of very unpleasant things can happen no matter how good of a ground you have at your radio. The only way to really prevent it, I guess, would be if the earth was made of solid metal and you stuck your radio right down onto that metal. Maybe then you would not get it. <clears throat> but, of course, we can dream about stuff like that. I don't think I'd want to have an earth that's a solid piece of aluminum, would you? Pretty boring place to be. But you do not want your feed line to be a resonant length of line. Taking velocity factor into account and treating that feed line as an ordinary piece of wire so even coaxial cable would work that way. So the velocity factor V would equal roughly 95%. That means that you take the, uh, that the RF travels 95% of the speed of light along this uh, line and therefore you have to make it a little shorter than a free space half or quarter wavelength would be in order to get an electrical quarter or wavelength or half wavelength or whatever but in any case you do not want resonance in your feed line you do not want it and it's easy to to change it just add or take away a little bit of feed line from your system it's usually easier to add a little for obvious reasons that's the scoop from here for now, Stan Jubilisco, proprietor and operator of W1GV, saying 73, which means best regards in ham radio jargon, and so long, which translates in my native language to di-di-di-da-di-da. Di, 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 di.